Uh, in this session, uh, let us see some MCQs. A large motor starting causes voltage, sag, swell, interruption, or transient. We'll see what it will not cause. A large motor will, what, is, what happens when a large motor is started? It will draw a large starting current, right? It doesn't cause a transient. Neither does it interrupt your supply. And obviously, when you are drawing a large current, you cannot have a voltage swell. Hence, the correct answer is it will cause a sag. It will cause a sag. And this sag will recover once the motor picks up speed. Capacitor switching causes. It cannot cause an over voltage. It doesn't cause a sag. Impulsive transients are caused by lightning. So capacitor switching causes oscillatory transients. In fact, capacitor switching is the main source of oscillatory transients in the network. Neutral burnouts are caused by triple N harmonics, lightning, oscillatory transient, and voltage swell. So why does a conductor burn out? Obviously, when, when the current flowing through it is heavy, right? When there's a large current flowing through that. So what is what currents flow through the neutral? It is a zero sequence current. The zero sequence flows through the neutral. So normally, unbalance causes new zero sequence currents and these will flow through the neutral. But the harmonics also have a sequence. Okay, and all the triple N harmonics are of zero sequence. Therefore, the triple N harmonics will flow through the neutral. And hence, neutral burnouts are caused by triple N harmonics. Okay, that's the correct answer. Welding equipment. So what happens whenever there is welding done, there is a rapid fluctuation of the voltage. So that causes flicker. In fact, welding is one of the main causes for flicker. So flicker is how the light intensity is perceived by the eye. The voltage will be within the limit only. So it is neither a sag nor a swell, but the variation is rapid and this will cause an irritation to the eye in the form of flicker. The most harmful harmonic currents. So all harmonic currents are harmful, right? They're not intended. The system is not designed for harmonic. The power system is not designed to carry harmonic currents. So all harmonic currents are harmful. But amongst them, the most harmful are the negative sequence, especially for the rotating machines. See, the flux produced by the negative sequence will be having double the slip compared to the flux produced with respect to the flux produced by the positive sequence current, right? So see, the positive sequence current will be flowing in one, will be in rotating in one direction. The negative sequence current will be flowing in with the same speed in the opposite direction. So the slip between the two will be two. Therefore, negative sequence currents will cause lot of heating and protective uh, devices are placed with rotating machines like motors and generators. There is a negative sequence relays. So these relays will have a threshold for the negative sequence current. And when it passes the threshold, these relays will trip the equipment, either the generator or the, or the motor. So they are the most harmful. Then PF capacitors break down because of harmonic currents sudden switching of motor loads, arcing equipment or reactors connected in parallel. See, PF capacitors are connected at many places to improve the power factor across motors and uh, different places. But then these capacitors uh, provide a low impedance path for high, high frequency currents, that is the harmonic currents, right? So if I install a PF capacitor, and somewhere around that harmonic currents are generated by some load, these capacitors become vulnerable because they are like, you know, like a sink for the 
high frequency currents and they will break down. So harmonic currents flowing through them are one of the main causes for the breakdown of PF capacitors and we have to be careful when we design them. Now, the voltage at a customer's premise whose normal voltage is 230 is measured to be 212 volts lasting for three minutes. What sort of a PQ disturbance is it? See, normally plus or minus 10% is permitted by the utility. So plus or minus 23 volts because the base is 230, nominal is 230 volts is permitted. So 212 volts is within the limit. So there is no violation of the limit. So it is not a sag under voltage or anything. It is simply a voltage variation. It lasts for three minutes. So it is not a flicker. It's not rapid, right? So it is a volt, simply a voltage variation. In fact, it's not even a power quality disturbance. There is a sudden loss of load. What is the most probable PQ problem that can occur? So when, when there's a loss of load, there can't be a sag because the current will reduce when the load is thrown off. So oscillatory transient, impulsive transients have nothing to do with load being switched on or off. So it is a voltage swell because the current will reduce and you would have compensated before with the load and suddenly now the current reduces and there'll be a voltage swell. Higher losses are caused in the presence of Positive sequence, negative sequence, zero sequence, or all harmonics? The answer is all harmonics. All harmonics cause skin effect. All harmonics in, in, in increase the RMS value. So all the harmonics will cause higher losses because of conduction. Using a DVR, we can compensate for voltage sags, voltage swell, flicker, or notches. You can compensate for all of them. DVR is a dynamic voltage restorer, right? It is basically an inverter, which will be in series with the equipment and it can compensate for any kind of voltage deviation. Power quality disturbances are conducted emissions because they, they flow through the system. They need a conducting medium, low frequency, na? power quality, they'll need a conducting medium and they're all conducted emissions. Oh, it's the same question repeated. Mm -hmm. A healthy feeder experiences a voltage sag. So there is no fault on the feeder, but still it experiences a sag. What could this be? A fault on a parallel feeder, okay? A heavy duty motor starting at a parallel feeder, overloading of the feeder or any of the above mentioned conditions. It can be any of the conditions. Because if, if, if you have, you remember, uh, I showed some case studies. So if you have a parallel feeder and there is a motor in that, that motor will draw a heavy current, right? Which will cause a drop, a sag in the PCC. PCC and a healthy feeder also will experience this sag. The same logic holds good even if there's a fault on the parallel feeder. Right? And if you overload the feeder, obviously it can experience a sag. So it could be any of these conditions. So you have to study properly. If, the, if you experience a sag, you have to study and find out what is the actual cause. Any of them can cause. A transformer is energized. So the most probable PQ disturbance it can cause is an oscillatory transient. So whenever transformers or capacitors are energized, they cause oscillatory transients because you will have a second order RLC circuit. You know, you have capacitors in the line then you have inductance of the windings, resistance. So all these will cause uh, an RLC circuit and will, you can end up with an oscillatory transient. Switching of electronic devices in converters causes notching. So uh, in the first module, I'll explain a notch is a small variation in the voltage caused whenever there is a commutation from one switching device to the other switching device. That is a current is transferred from one device to another device. Shunt capacitors are used to improve power factor, to uh, improve power transfer, reduce impulsive transient or oscillatory transient. They are used to improve power factor. Arc furnaces 
predominantly cause voltage sag, notching, flicker, or voltage swell. They cause flicker along with welding equipment. So these are some uh, quick MCQs which would be helpful for you if you are uh, preparing for some uh, 